Welcome to Ministry in Motion, where we explore best practices for your ministry in the 21st century. I'm Derek Morris. Our topic today, effective church leaders. What are the characteristics, attitudes, and skills every effective church leader needs? Well, that's an important topic, and our guest today has special expertise in that area, Jonas Arise. Jonas, good to have you here today. I'm delighted to be here, too. And you have authored a book, and the subtitle is just that, The Characteristics, Attitudes, and Skills Every Effective Church Leader Needs. It's called Wanted a Good Pastor. Yes. It's a... And that's already been translated, by the way, into more than one language, probably Portuguese, yes, Spanish. Yes, Spanish, English, and French. And French. And in Polish, and in Serbian, so it's, other it, languages. So it, God's using that simple resource to impact many people. I just want to tell you, our viewers, that we are going to give away 50 copies of this valuable resource to the first 50 viewers who write in to our website. You can go to ministryemotion.tv. Some will probably begin to write in right now, even though you haven't heard some of the powerful insights that Jonas will be sharing with us. But Jonas has generously offered to send out 50 copies to any viewer. That's who right. writes in? Well, just That's one right. per viewer. And you'll have to send your name and your complete mailing address. This is a tremendous... Uh, blessing to leaders. Thank you so much, Jonas. I know you, in your book, you deal with a, a number of characteristics, attitudes, and skills, but let's just start with one that you say, this is really important to be an effective church leader. What would you start with? Uh, well, if I can resume this book in one phrase, a good pastor is the one who teach his uh, members how to pray, how to read the Bible, and how to share their faith. So if you were to summarize the entire message of the book in, in one sentence, uh, this effective church leader teaches his or her church members to pray, exactly. to listen to God in His Word, and, and to, to share, share their, their faith, faith with others. That's correct. Uh, it's another important aspect in our pastoral ministry is when we talk about the excellence of a pastor. Because a good pastor is not only the one who is doing great things for the local congregation, but is the one who is living according to the God's heart. So we must be something before we do something for the local congregation. So ultimately, uh, an effective church leader is, is a model, an example. That's correct. I think uh, Peter talks about being an example to the flock. That, that's a solemn responsibility, isn't it? That's correct. In, in the picture that I like to see in a pastor, it's like an uh, airplane flying, well balanced. Because many times we have pastors that they are good, but in just one specific area. I heard sometimes people say, oh, that pastor is good for youth. That pastor is good for children. That pastor is good in preaching. But just one aspect, they are good. I like to see a pastor uh, with a well-balanced ministry. Maybe he can be good in one side, but he is also gives some balance in the other side, like an airplane, a fly well balanced. You know, that reminds me of uh, Luke describing Jesus. He increased in wisdom, stature, favor with God, and favor with man. So Jesus was also balanced. Which brings me to the first uh, characteristic of an effective church leader, which I think was modeled in the life and ministry of Jesus. Let's talk about that. Well... I can talk about a good pastor as a good preacher, as a prayerful person, as a spiritual leader, but one point that I value in leadership is our relationship with God. When we grow in our relationship with God, because in Jeremiah 3.15, God is looking for leaders according to His heart, not for those things that they can do for the church or for the congregation, but people who knows God well, who knows his will, his desires, so he can share God before 
the congregation because he is reflecting God himself in his ministry. It's interesting when you think about uh, people who are training, especially in a formal training program, uh, we focus a lot on theology. Mm -hmm. We even focus on uh, practical skills, uh, how to perform a wedding, how to uh, care for people when they're sick and visit them. But the idea of having a strong relationship with God, maybe it's sometimes uh, assumed. Uh, we know it's important. That's correct. But you're saying actually uh, an essential characteristic foundation of an effective ministry. church leader. That's correct. It's the foundation. So how does a, a, a pastor, a lay leader, nurture his or her relationship with God so they can really be an example to Asking their God congregation? Asking God every day, oh Lord, what is your desire for my ministry? help me to live what I'm teaching, what I'm preaching. So I will not be a kind of hypocrite. Hypocrite? Hypocrite. Right. In my ministry. I, I need to be a person who have some kind of, uh, uh, not only personality, but I used, to, I used to say in this book, a pastor with a kind of uh, uh, integrity. Yes. In what I do is something that I live. Yes. Maybe it's the ideal for me too, but I'm looking for to follow those things that I'm preaching to my congregation. Now you talked about prayer because you said, Lord, help me. So that's prayer. Sure. Um, reading the Bible, sometimes uh, leaders, they get so busy, they only open the Bible to prepare a talk or a Bible study or a sermon. I'm hearing you say that an effective church leader must take time also, in the Word of God, reading the Word for himself, for herself. Spiritual preparation is something very important for any kind of activities in our life. And it's not different for ministry. For example, when I go to visit my church members, I need to get prepared spiritually. I need to spend some time with God in prayer, reading the Bible, in order to visit my people and to be able to share and to represent God well. When I'm going to deliver a sermon in my church, I need to be prepared oh, spiritually also because it's a very important uh, ministry when we are before the congregation and we are there to represent God's will before the congregation through the sermon. When I'm going to do anything in my ministry, I need to start with my personal relationship with God. That is so important. Thank you, Jonas, for, for reminding us of that precious truth. I remember when I first graduated from seminary and I went out and I was in a crisis situation where someone was dying. And I realized that the family, they didn't care about what grades I got in seminary. That's they didn't care about all of the historical theology or the church history. What really mattered was whether their pastor had a living connection with God. After the break, we want to talk about how an effective church leader also knows how to have a living connection with people. Uh, not just a good orator, but a person who connects one-on-one -on -one in an effective way. We'll look at that after the break. You can follow our program at ministryinmotion.tv, learning how to be an effective church leader. We'll be right back after the break.
Welcome back to Ministry in Motion. Our topic today, effective church leaders. What are the characteristics, attitudes, and skills that every effective church leader needs? Uh, that's the topic of Jonas's book, our guest today, Jonas. Your book, Wanted a Good Pastor. I suppose it could have said Wanted a Good Leader because this could be a lay leader of a congregation too, right? Uh -huh. Yeah, but you've got I, some characteristics there that are crucially important. If I talk about a good leader, I'm talking about only one side of maybe the job description for a good pastor. Because a pastor is a leader, but a good pastor also maybe should have a, a strong family. Uh, he needs to know how to build good relationship. And we're going to talk about some of that in this next segment. But I want to tell our viewers, if you would like a copy of Jonas Arise's book, wanted a good pastor, you can go to our website at ministryinmotion.tv. The first 50 viewers who go to our website, give us your name and your complete mailing address, and we'd love to hear about your ministry too. We're going to send a copy of that valuable resource to you, thanks to the generosity of, of the author. So ministryinmotion.tv, some of you may go while you're watching the program today. And uh, don't forget your name and complete mailing address. Jonas, we talked in the first part of the program a crucial topic, and that was a living connection with God through prayer, reading of the Scripture, listening to God, living what we speak, living examples, if you will. That's we want to move in the second part of our program. You also talked about an effective church leader connects with people. Let's talk about that. I think as much we are closer to God, we become closer to people. And many times people are asking, why some pastors with some kind of superior theological formation or even with some different skills fail when others may be more simple in their abilities, they are doing good and great job. I think the answer is they know how to build good relationship. When I started my ministry, Derek, somebody told me, Jonas, we'd like to be good in your relationship or in your ministry. He told me, be professional. 50% of your ministry, you must be a good professional. And the other 50%, you must have good relationship. So you've got the professional training and knowing how to do certain tasks and skills, but you've also got that emphasis on building Good relationships. Good relationship. Because church members and even church administrators, they are looking for pastors who are capable, who have good skills, but pastors who have good skills in building good relationship. So let's be very practical now. How did you, as a young pastor, you've pastored many churches. Now you're a trainer of pastors and elders around the world. Um, how did you begin learning how to build good relationships. What did you do to develop that, that important characteristic? One principle that I have applied in my personal ministry is be uh, open to your church members. Don't be pastors or, or pastor only of one special group or those who are rich in the local congregation. You need to be available to all. So many times, 20% of our church members are taking 80% of the pastor's time. This is not good. Mm. We are there to serve the entire congregation. So you want to take time for everyone. Now, is, are there some opportunities in, in the life of a church where you can uh, do that? You, you, you couldn't visit them all every week in their homes. How, how do you connect with them? You can compensate. Uh, maybe stay at the church door before service and after service. So you don't just disappear after That's you've preached correct. a wonderful so sermon? So you are not only in the pulpit. If your friendship with people, with your congregation, is built only when you are preaching, the close relationship that you are having with your people will not be the, the best one. The best one is when you visit them, when you are close to them. So stay at the church door. Have a ministry. You can greet your members. You can greet the visitors. So when you preach to them during the sermon, you have already had a first contact with those who are visiting the church. When you are there with your wife or even with your children, you are telling church members and visitors, I am the pastor. I'm available to you. Welcome to this congregation, and let's worship God together. You know, that's very, very practical, because uh, time-wise, 
those people have all come to the church. They're all there now. And you're saying, use that time wisely. Shake their hands, learn their names, build relationships with them. That's correct. And in your personal relationship with church members, be a loving person, be respectful, uh, be present where they are. So they will feel that you are a person who value good relationship and they will respect you and they will value you as a spiritual leader. Are there some other opportunities I might have to build those relationship skills besides uh, standing at the door before or after the service? When, when else could I uh, build I those think relationships? The best way to build a good relationship with the congregation is visiting them. And that's actually a second characteristic that's of an effective church leader, right? I spent two chapters in this book because it's so important pastoral visitation is the lost art in ministry today. So we need to restore those things that are very important to build good relationships. Now, if I'm following the logic, and let me just review what we've seen so far, living connection with God, where, where I'm living what I'm speaking, prayer, reading the scripture, communing with God, and uh, now I'm coming and I'm building relationships with people, even at the church as I welcome them, greet them, I'm open to them. That seems to me a powerful preparation for coming to a person's home. That's you've, right. already, you, you've already made some important uh, progress before you even get to their home. That's correct. And when we talk about visitation, we understand that we become closer to the church members and we understand their needs and we will build better relationship with them and they will trust us because visitation is a kind of incarnational ministry. It's a ministry of love and we need to learn how to love people. Now, the last church that you pastored before you came into a more uh, of a training and leadership role, uh, how many members were there in that congregation? About 2,500 members. 2,500 members. The now, big congregation. It, it, and, and I'm sure you didn't do all of the visitation, but are you telling me that you did take some of your time? One of the characteristics of Pastor Jonas Arise in that congregation was a commitment to visitation. That's correct. And I used to call them by phone during the day many times in birthdays, special moments in their lives. So I was trying to be very present in their lives. We'll talk after the okay. break about how you did that. You're already smiling, but I'm sure that the church members were smiling too. In a church of 2,500 members, a pastor taking time to call and wish them a happy birthday or a happy anniversary, uh, undergirding all of that, a commitment to be connected to God, yes, but also connected to people. What powerful lessons. We'll be right back with more insights about effective church leaders right after the break. Welcome back to Ministry in Motion. Our topic today, effective church leaders and our guest, Pastor Jonas Arise. Jonas, I've learned so much talking with you today. I'm loving to be here talking to you about those things that is in my heart. And you know, I'm excited that, that this book that you've written wanted a good pastor, which would be good for any church leader, uh, that you've generously offered 50 copies of your book to viewers who write to our website. Here's the address, ministryinmotion.tv. If you will be one of the first 50 to write to us at that website, 
ministryinmotion.tv. You can go there and click on contact, or you can actually write to feedback at ministryinmotion.tv. The first 50 of you who write, we will send you a copy if you give us your complete name and your mailing address. We'd also like to hear about your ministry, by the way. But Jonas, thanks for your generosity in offering this valuable resource. There are many uh, characteristics, attitudes, and skills that we can't cover today, but we've talked about several. We've talked about a living connection with God through prayer and Bible study. We've talked about connecting with people. And now we want to talk very specifically about visitation, about mm -hmm coming into the homes of people. And, uh, and what, what are some of the uh, characteristics, what would we call them, elements of effective visitation mm -hmm. that you'd like to share with our Ministry of Motion viewers? First of all, pastoral visitation seems today uh, as something that is not so important in pastoral ministry. And we need to restore the value of pastors visiting people. The word pastoring, it means not preaching, uh, not giving some counsels, but visiting people where they are, where they live, in order to understand their needs. Our ministry will be enriched. Now, you mentioned that you, the last church you pastored before your global responsibilities now, you had 2,500 members. Now, obviously, you couldn't visit them all. For sure. How did you decide which ones to visit? I have a list in my heart, even I have a plan for visitation that I include those who are working with me and even my local elders, I have a plan to include them in pastoral visitation. But maybe we need to start with the sick people, the sick people. We need to visit the elderly. We need to visit our visitors. We need to visit even church leaders in order to give special attention to them. So we, you've trained some of your other leaders to do visitation. Different kinds of visitation. But you've not just stepped away from visitation no, no, at I'm all. No, no, I'm visiting with them. You, and many times where I cannot be there, I send somebody to visit something. Okay, so you're taking someone, training them. That's what correct. are some of the elements uh, that you say, the, the, these are some things that should happen uh, we're not just going there and talking about sports or wh That's what are correct. some of the elements in of my personal visitation? view uh, we are not doing a great pastoral visitation if we do not come with the bible okay reading the bible is the first element we need to show people that we are there for spiritual matters it's not so is that the very first work. thing i do I'm, I'm assuming i say hello to them first bring a bible I, with you but my bible's with me you don't need to start the visitation reading the bible but okay. during the visitation Somewhere you must there. read the bible all right select some tests that can apply to the needs of those who are visiting and read scripture second pray with them many people they say hey how are you i, I will be praying for you but Pray with them while you are there. So it, it's actually possible someone might go and never pray. That, that would be a, sure. a big mistake. That's correct. And ask them for what maybe I pray, I can pray for you. Okay. Don't assume that you know everything that they need. Ask them for what do you want that I pray for you. So this becomes a very personal prayer time. That's correct. Pray for them and with them. Number three, sing a song. Maybe this is new for many pastors. <laughs> what if we don't <laughs> sing that well? Well, we if, do you, our best, if you huh? don't have the gift of singing, I promise you, if you sing a short psalm or hymn yes. while you, you are visiting your people, after three years, you'll be so good, maybe you can record <laughs> a CD. <laughs> but but uh, this, this again sounds uh, quite uh, personal, that you're taking the time to sing Amazing Grace or I used to Blessed ask Assurance, them, Jesus is mine. What is your mind. favorite song? Ah, so even there, it's personal. That's correct. You're wanting to... Many of them, they say, oh, I have a hymn that reminds me when I was baptized. Beautiful. When I gave my life to Jesus or when my father, who was a good Christian, passed away. So when we sing, the Holy Spirit starts working in a different way in our hearts, in the hearts of those people. And the environment becomes totally different. All right. Because I see visitation, Derek, as a small worship service. Beautiful. We sing, we pray, and we read the Bible. And what are the other elements? The other element is pastors should be ready to listen to the people. Mm. Many, many times we are ready to speak, but we have two ears and one tongue. It means that we <laughs> need to hear more and speak less. Speak less. less. So we're listening, we're listening to 
things that perhaps are going on in the person's life. When we listen to them, what they need to tell us, we express respect. Ah. We are saying to them, we are here and we are here to help you. So be ready to listen. So we're listening. What else are we doing? That's correct. The other point is have a checklist in your mind. Mm. Like a doctor, when you go to the doctor, he asks you like many checkup. questions. Yes, but don't, don't do this <laughs> in front. Have a, a, a spiritual checklist in your mind. All right. How is your communion with God? Mm. Ask some questions, essential questions, to understand their spiritual needs. Beautiful. How many Very people in your family uh, uh, are not yet uh, baptized, for mm -hmm. example, or Christian? Yes. Uh, how is your church attendance? How is your family worship? So these, this is your checklist. And you, Mental uh, checklist. And you got one more element that you want yes. to accomplish? And the last element is a great opportunity to promote church program. So let them know about what's happening in the church. That's correct. You can promote the evangelism in the church. You can promote any event in the church. When on Sabbath morning or during the week, while you are in the church, promoting church program, it means that you are not visiting people because the best oh. way to share church program is when we are visiting them. And that is so much more personal than sure. just sending them a letter or an email. I ask them, what can you do to help me to accomplish this church now program? Now you've recruited them. You know, in the few seconds we have remaining, if you haven't written down the email address or the website, ministryemotion.tv, go to the website, click on contact, give us your name and complete mailing address. If you're one of the first 50 viewers to write an email to us, we want to send you a copy of Jonas Arise's book, Characteristics, Attitudes and Skills Every Effective Leader Needs. Thanks so much, Jonas, for being with us today. And okay. thank you to you for being with us for Ministry in Motion. If you'd like to watch the program again, go to our website, ministryinmotion.tv. May God bless you in your ministry for him.